Right. Good afternoon, YouTube. Today I'm going to show you how I make a leather stack handle and a few very simple steps that I use in order to prepare the material and the glue assemble and finish the handle. So I hope you enjoy and uh, thanks very much for watching. Right, so these are the things that I need. Obviously, I haven't put the threaded rod on the tang yet. But I'll do that uh, once I have prepared all the stacks of leather. Obviously you cut as many pieces as you need uh, for the length of your handle. And this handle is for someone with a slightly smaller hand. So it's going to be about 120 mils long. So I'll stack it until it reads about 120 mils. And then obviously stop. Allow for one more piece for the compression of the leather. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to punch all the holes in. I used to cut them in with a, um, a Stanley knife. But that takes too long so i made myself this little punch from a piece of round tubing to ham it flat and then sort of grind a little edge on it which hammers in quite nicely then you need a base for your punch so you can't just use the anvil like you saw earlier so i've got this old piece of wood that i use and i just put the piece of leather on top of that and stamp it in because you don't want to stamp this into the surface of the anvil all right so i'm going to stamp a few and then we move on Okay, so I've decided rather than using a piece of wood, I'm just going to use another piece of leather. Let me just put a piece on top. The wood I found absorbs too much shock and the blade doesn't cut through nice and neatly. Whereas on another piece of leather, it pierces very swiftly through because you've got the weight of the anvil behind it. Now your first piece, you notice I cut one and then I cut another one. This is because my tang is a little bit broader. Now here's an important tip. You can see where I've cut through the front. Don't put that on first. Because what happens is it creates, okay this one's not a problem, but if it's slightly snug, this will grip it and it'll be hard to pull. It'll be hard to pull it off. So what I do is I put it on backwards so that the smooth side is facing out. Alright, so it doesn't look like I need to make them that big. I can perhaps make them a little smaller. Then you go. Right. There you go. So now I'm going to do the rest. Okay, obviously measuring past the 120 that I'm going to do here, because there will be a threaded rod on the end. Okay, you can do that before. There's nothing wrong with it. I haven't got around to it yet, so there's no specific reason for me not having welded it on right now. Okay, so the next you'll see me is all the pieces will be cut. Another tip, this will eventually fill up with the little stubs here. So what I do is I just tap it until it all loosens up and it all comes out the back. But if you let it get too tight, you're going to have to get your flies or something and get it out. Okay, there you go, now it's clear. You have to do that regularly, otherwise it's going to clog. Okay, so I've got all the pieces on. I've welded my threaded rod onto the end. We're going to just separate them. Now, these are in the order that I want them. So these have, these have to lie like this and I mustn't interfere with those. So when I assemble it, they go on one piece at a time. I then need two other items, which are... All right, so what I have from my American friends, a piece of saran wrap for my South African friends, we call it cling wrap, because it clings to everything. So I'll put that over there. Then I've got a piece of metal and a piece of wood. And I don't know if I'll need the wood, but we're certainly gonna give the old college try. So these, these are just active spaces. The metal, because it doesn't flex with the, uh, with the leather. I wanna keep it rigid to keep the leather packed solid. So I've got an old lid of a, a hot chocolate thing, a hot chocolate 
container that I use to mix my slow setting epoxy. Now this stuff I got from uh, the knife shop. We're no longer selling this. This is a slow set epoxy, 24 hours. So this is the last of it, which I'm going to use for this handle. I'll have to go get some more of another brand. Now it's cold outside, so this fluid is very stiff. We'll carry on once I've got both of those into here. And it's an equal parts mixing. So all I'm going to do is empty both of them in here and stir it up, and then we're going to start stacking the handle. So I've got a threaded nut, or threaded nut, just a normal nut with a washer. It's going to go on the outside of the plate there. And we're going to clamp it with okay. So I fill this up and we're mixing it. Now this is slow setting epoxy. I'm so used to working with quick set that my instinct is to do everything quickly. With this stuff you can literally go have lunch and a cup of coffee and come back and finish working it. It may seem like a lot but we've got a lot of gluing. To got this all glued up we want to set it but if I just glue it together with this glue is going to ooze through and it's going to glue this to the leather which we don't want so to prevent that all I do is I put a piece of the ring wrap like that. a hole through like this is because once I once I grind off the end of the um, threaded rod it's only gonna be a tiny little bit sticking out and if I grind it too short now I wouldn't be able to tighten it properly so we still got one more step to go You know what I've done? I've gone and put the wrong side of the wood facing down. So, all your nuts to stop the glue from sticking to it so that you can more easily remove it once everything is dried. Okay, there we go. Now I can make it proper tight. All my leather is lined up, just holding there. We want to tighten them that. And you don't want to tighten it too much because you run the risk of ripping the weld off. Just there we go. That's enough. All right, there we go. That's all glued together. Now tomorrow when it's hard, we'll come back. We'll remove the, the nut and the plate. We'll put the last piece of leather in and put the pommel cap on and then we'll start grinding the leather off and making it look pretty. Thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, so it's been sitting overnight. It's all nice and hard. I am going to remove our plates at the back. So now, I need two more pieces of this. I just got to make an extra one quickly. And then we taper it slightly on one end so that it creates an angle. And then we can use quick set and glue it all together and tape it up. I just got to trim that shorter. All right, so 
I've prepared three extra pieces and I've tapered them all on the grinder. Now you can use a skiving tool to do this. The skiving tool is basically just a very thin blade. And you can shave it off using that. But we're in the workshop, so I use the grinder. Just do that carefully, don't grind your fingertips. So now I'm going to mix it together some quick set clear. I've already test fitted it, so I know it fits nicely. We're going to put together some of the fast setting epoxy. And a scrap piece of cardboard that I had lying around. And we'll use that to fill up that and let it set faster. <laughs> Now, doing it this method, the pommel wants to grip the last piece of leather and slide it around. You just got to get your fingers in the way, stop it from sliding. I'm going to get a little bit of epoxy on your fingers, but that's okay. Now, you've got to be careful not to over tighten this because you can also strip the nut off. Let's get it right. But I did check before how many turns I could put it in. Yeah, looks like it's going to sit. So there you go, now our pommel sits at an angle. Just gives it that nice flow. Okay, so once that's hardened, we'll take the bandsaw, we'll trim off the excess leather. And we'll pre-shape the pommel before we grind it. And yeah, and that's it. This, I can't put it there like that to cut this way. So we're gonna have to grind that off. All right, but there you go, that's an idea of the general shape. Maybe I can get in there a little bit. grind that manually so now I'm gonna shape pre-shape this and then we can grind the rest to match all right so I've got a fresh 60 grit soft belt and I'm just gonna remove the sides quickly and then I'm gonna pre-shape the uh, pommel now it gets very dusty <laughs>
so everything's been pre-shaped. Now we're ready for the final polishing. But now if you look here on the handle, you can see the little burn marks from the belt being slightly blunt. There's a way to avoid this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a fresh 180 grit on this and smooth it over. And then we're going to do my secret maneuver, which will make your life much easier. With minimal burning, but that'll go away. Now my secret technique is... Dip the handle in water, just once. Now, if you, if you know your leather, you know that when you wet leather, it hardens. In this case, the now wet leather will grind much, much easier without burning. Yeah, perfect. Now, as you can't see, but I can feel it's incredibly smooth. Now, if I just left that dry, it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have worked like this. And I'm going to clean up the pommel. Seal up the leather. We have a hair dryer. You can use a heat gun. The only reason I use a hair dryer is because that's what I've got. And some beeswax. All you take the hair dryer to the handle. We warm it and we rub the beeswax. I'll warm the beeswax a little bit as well. And um, rub good. I'll give it about eight coats until it's fully saturated and that'll make it waterproof. And then I'll take it to the bucking machine and tape it up. And and buffed it. Now we're just going to run it over a smooth belt just to polish up the stickiness from the wax. And there you go. Now I'll just put one more coat of museum wax on it and we're done.